Jack Campbell, and I'm going to be giving you the volunteer basic training. I'm going to start here. Start with uh, what is Rotary Youth Exchange? Rotary Youth Exchange is a program that's been around for over 75 years. It, uh, currently, there are over 8,000 students in over 80 countries that are participating in Rotary Youth Exchange. Total, uh, total volunteer base is, of course, uh, all the Rotarians throughout the world, which is over 1.2 million Rotarians and more than 32,000 Rotary clubs throughout the world. Rotary District 5730. Rotary 5730 uh, goes from the from Pecos to Sweetwater all the way up to the top of the Panhandle. And currently we have 16 Rotarians on our committee. We are a member of SRI. <clears throat> SRI stands for South Central Rotary Youth Exchange. And as you can see on the map, uh, all these r different Rotary districts make up SCRI. The reason we're involved in SCRI is that uh, there are lots of things that we have to do for uh, Department of State regulations, uh, immigration regulations, and of course Rotary regulations, and opposed to trying to, uh, for all these districts having to keep up with all the different things, uh, we're able to put our resources and whether as a multi-district. So you're talk about scry sometimes. Chain command. Right at the bottom, you will see uh, that the student, the host family, and the club, they're all uh, providing information to the club counselor. In District 730, all of our counselors are also local coordinators. Counselor, of course, is a rotary term, and local coordinator is a district, excuse me, is a Department of State term. And all of our counselors are also local Local coordinators. That counselor slash local coordinator is going to be passing district uh, information to me as the district YEO, and I'll also be getting information from the sponsoring YEO, i.e., the youth exchange officer in the other country, as well as my committee. Ultimately, the person responsible for what goes on within the district, including Rotary Youth Exchange, is, of course, the district governor. Uh, the uh, district governor to be Paul Anderson. And so only he has the ability to make decisions within his district. We do have a crisis management plan. Uh, crisis management plan is provided to you on a document uh, in <clears throat> its entirety, which will be provided to you. I'll go over some of the uh, um, points within the crisis management plan. The management plan is for inbounds and outbound students. D730 adopted the crisis management plan in March of 2011. Campbell is our current youth protection officer, and he is the chair of the crisis management uh, committee. And Ketterson is the vice chair of that team. The important thing within the crisis management plan is to provide timely, accurate, and concise information. Uh, <clears throat> these are the uh, top things within this plan. Uh, in order to prevent crisis, in order to uh, handle crisis in a proper manner, we've got to be uh, extremely timely and accurate and concise with our information. If something happens, you need to provide that information directly to the Youth Protection Officer or to myself immediately and make sure that you document everything. I, the Youth Exchange Officer, will contact the Youth Exchange Officer uh, in the uh, other country who will contact the natural parents. We want to avoid having uh, host parents or counselors contacting the youth exchange officer or even worse, contacting the natural parents in case of a crisis. Uh, there can oftentimes be a language barrier, and so I want to avoid that problem and allow me to talk to the youth exchange officer in the other country and allow them to talk to the natural parents. The media representative is Amy McAtee up in Tulia, and uh, in case of an emergency, we have trained Amy in the art of uh, talking with the media, and so we ask that host parents, counselors, uh, anybody else, any other volunteers in the organization stay away from, from talking to media. If asked questions from the media, we ask that you direct those questions to Amy McAtee as the uh, media representative. <coughs> In case of a crisis, we will have our district governor contact the sponsoring district governor 
of the uh, sponsoring country. This counselor will work with the host Rotary Club, our crisis counselor, uh, Suzanne Rathman. And, uh, she will work with the host Rotary Club, the inbound students, uh, and host families. Basically, she'll work with anybody involved in the, in the uh, crisis uh, to help them in helping with the situation and how to handle the situation. The majors, forms, and press releases in the plan itself, uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All that information is already provided within the plan. We're going to now a little bit about sexual abuse and harassment reporting, and we do have a document, document available and which will be provided to you on sexual abuse and harassment reporting. But we're going to touch on some of the highlights. Again, it is for inbound and outbound students. 5730 adopted this plan in 2010, and we ask that everybody look over that plan. If a student approaches you and says, hey, um, I feel like I've been sexually abused or harassed, what do you do? Well, the first thing you do is you listen very attentively and stay calm. If you're um, calm, the student is not going to want to share that information with you, and so you need to be very calm and sit down and reassure the student that, that they're making the right decision by talking to you about it. You want to protect the student. There are lots of times when the student may start telling you things that uh, that you may uh, interpret as the student's fault in some of these problems. But right now, your job is to protect the student and the student's representative. Uh, reassure them, again, that they're doing the right thing by talking to you about it. You want to get all the facts but you don't want to interrogate. Uh, you don't want to make judgment. Uh, you just want to uh, report the information that's being provided to you. Unjudgmental and reassure the student again that they're making the right decision by talking to you about the problem. You want your privacy, but you cannot ensure confidentiality. If the student says, and they're going to, if the student says, you know, I've got this thing that I really want to tell you about, but uh, will you promise not to tell anybody? And don't say yes to that, uh, because the answer is no. You, you, can, you can't make that promise. Uh, what you can do is, is assure the student that uh, the problem will be kept uh, private, and only people that will know about it are the, uh, the uh, local authorities that, that are required to know about it, uh, and the uh, Rotary representatives uh, that need to know about the problem as well. You document and record everything that's being said. And, of course, contact the Youth Protection Officer, Joe Campbell. And if you can't find him, contact me or any of the other committee members immediately. So, what are some of the do's about Rotary Youth Exchange? First of all, in a Rotary Youth Exchange, two host families is mandatory. Uh, we tell everyone that three host families really is optimal. Uh, by having three host families, each uh, host family has a student for about three months, which seems to work very well. But it is mandatory that you have at least two host families. With some situations in the past where uh, some club members thought that they would just keep the student the entire year, and that is against Rotary rules and against District 5730 rules. Uh, so two host families is required. Also, we get the question, well, can we have more than three? And the answer is yes, you can have as many host families as you want. Uh, the kids are required to go to high school. They are coming here on a J-1 high school visa, and so they are required to attend high school. Uh, we've got a few countries where kids come from, and they think that this is going to be play time the entire time, and uh, they are required to go to high school. You will have a counselor slash local coordinator, and we'll talk more about that here in a second. And uh, we ask that you, you make the student a club member, uh, unofficially. Uh, we um, we ask our students to come into our club at least half the time. Uh, we have meetings and special functions. We also uh, want student there as well. We even buy a little badge for the student to wear, uh, just like our membership badges that says Rotary Youth Exchange Student. And we have found that that does several things. First of all, uh, the students arrive here in the country, being able to go to a Rotary Club meeting allows the student to understand that there is a support structure in place for them when they get here. They're not out there on their own. Uh, it's not just the host family that is looking out for them. And we want your club to get involved. 
uh, have the student there as much as possible so that other members of the club can uh, be involved with the student. Maybe one of the club members wants to take them to the rodeo or uh, wants to take them to the lake for the weekend. There are criminal background checks and certain things we have to do uh, for overnight stays with uh, other Rotarians or other volunteers, period. Um, students to be uh, an integral part of your club. One of the about youth exchange is that, well, these kids can't be UIL eligible, and that's not the case. As long as they have not graduated from uh, high school in their home country, uh, they are eligible for UIL activities, and I can provide you paperwork uh, to provide to the athletic director or school administration uh, to provide UIL eligibility. We had students that have been on football teams, basketball teams, volleyball teams, uh, UIL choir, UIL track, tennis teams, and everything else. So uh, we want the student to be involved. Insurance is a requirement. The students are required to buy health insurance before they get here. Matter of fact, I won't even send the application form to them until they've already paid for their health insurance. That should not be a burden to you as the uh, counselor uh, or to any other volunteer, including the host parents. And so we reassure everyone that they do come uh, with health insurance. And we want you to have fun. Uh, students are, are wonderful students, and they're here to have fun, and we want you to have fun with them. What are some of the don'ts of Rotary Youth Exchange? We're going to talk about the six D's of Rotary Youth Exchange. And the first one up there at the top, of course, is no drinking. Students are not allowed to drink while they're here. Um, the, um, importantly, we don't want to see any students intoxicated in any form or fashion or public drinking. If you are... Um, family and everybody in the family is sharing a glass of wine and you would otherwise share that same glass of wine with your own child of that same age uh, and you're doing that within your home, uh, we feel like that's fine. Uh, but any kind of public, any kind of intoxication, any kind of public drinking is forbidden. Uh, go counterclockwise. The next one that you see is no drugs. Uh, students obviously uh, are not allowed to take any illegal drugs, and they're also not allowed to take any legal drugs that they are not prescribed medication to. Now, of course, over the medication is up to the host family and the counselors, um, and that's perfectly fine uh, depending on the situation. Next is no dating. Students are not allowed to date while they're uh, here. Uh, tag on to that. Obviously, any kind of sexual relationships between the student and anybody else is, is strictly forbidden for obvious reasons. Uh, we don't want to create any kind of international uh, incidences and, uh, or situations where students run off uh, to be other people. That's not what they're here for, uh, so we tell them no dating. Now, if the student wants to go to the prom or wants to go out with friends, wants to go on a date, as long as it doesn't become a serious relationship, we usually allow that. Next C is no downloading of pornographic material. Students are not allowed to view, transmit um, any type of pornographic material, be it uh, pictures or text. Uh, we want them to stay away from that slippery slope. Then is no driving. Students are not allowed to drive any motorized vehicle while they are here. Uh, it has been confused many times in the past uh, that any type of motorized vehicle would include, uh, obviously, a car. Uh, it would also include a riding lawnmower, a jet ski, a snowmobile, uh, anything with a motor on it, they're not allowed to drive it. They can certainly ride on it, uh, but they're not allowed to drive it. And the reason for that is that they're not insured to drive those things. If for any reason the student was driving something and was injured, that's not covered in the health insurance, and so you as a volunteer are taking a big risk uh, by allowing the student to do that. The last one is no defacing your body. You're allowed to do anything to your body that's going to be permanent, uh, a permanent change since you got here. Uh, students, of course, you know, if they come over with tattoos or anything, piercings, things like that, that's fine. But I tell everybody that you have to get back on the plane at the end of your exchange the exact same way Mama puts you on the airplane to start with. So no tattoos, no piercings, uh, anything that would uh, permanently 
uh, your body. You know, a henna tattoo is fine. Obviously, haircuts are fine. Hair dyeing is fine uh, because that is temporary. But uh, piercings and tattoos and things of that nature are not. Some of the don'ts for adults. As a volunteer, you want to be very careful about improper physical contact. Uh, we tell everybody that we want you to treat the students exactly like you would treat your own kids. The one exception to that rule is any type of improper physical contact. If you uh, joke around a lot with your kids and horse around and wrestle and stuff like that, that can be misconstrued between uh, another student uh, that is not your child. And so we tell you to be very careful about improper physical contact. Abuse as well, we want to make sure that uh, the kids are not harassed or abused in any form or fashion. That includes verbal abuse. Verbal abuse can be harsh language. Uh, it can also be just telling dirty jokes and, and uh, improper jokes uh, or telling improper stories, things of that nature. Uh, we also say not to provide any type of misleading environment. Misleading environment would include... Um, Maybe a host father and a, a student who is a female being alone at the same time. Um, maybe it is, um, you know, having some a conversation that's really improper between an uh, adult and a kid. So you don't want to put yourself as a volunteer in any type of situation that might by, might be bleh, might be misleading. Full needs to be approved. Uh, by the district, of course, the students are allowed to travel within town, depending on what the counselor and the uh, host parents say. Again, there may be some CBCs or other forms that we may need to fill out uh, in certain cases. But traveling outside the city does need to be approved. We are required to know where the students are at all times, and uh, so uh, please let us know. Certainly, you know, travel with the school, travel with the host family, travel with the counselor. Um, in most cases, um, traveling with other people, again, there may be additional forms or CVCs that we need to run. But the student traveling by themselves is absolutely prohibited. And students traveling um, to meet relatives or to um, uh, friends and, and family is prohibited. And you don't want to make any promises that you can't keep. Um, don't, don't promise them that they're going to go to Disneyland while they're here or things like that. This is a youth exchange. It's a cultural exchange. It's not a travel exchange. The exchange committee ultimately is in charge of all the students. It's very important that clubs, counselors, uh, everybody understands that. Um, the, only, the only entity out there that can uh, uh, make a change in what the youth and what the exchange committee uh, chooses to do with a student is, of course, the district governor. Duties of the counselor slash local coordinator. You are the student's representative. Uh, you are the person out there that is representing the student. The club president, of course, is the one out there representing the club. Uh, you are, in sense, the legal guardian for the student. We do that. Uh, when you enroll the student in high school, uh, you per use your address as the host, uh, as the, the local coordinator, um, as their uh, legal address. Um, and, uh, report card should come to you. Uh, you need to be an integral part of, of representing that student. You do to have training course, which is what we're doing here. You will also be required to take some Department of State training. Take a Department of State test so that you can be certified by the Department of State to be the local coordinator. Uh, here's the DOS training and exam. Uh, there is a 120 mile rule. A uh, local coordinator cannot be um, cannot live more than 120 miles away from the student, uh, and that's why we have all of our counselors be the local coordinators. You connect with a student. Uh, one of the ways we do that is that we uh, have you come to our orientation once the students arrive. So we have the counselors and the students. No host families. Uh, there'll be committee members there. Uh, but it allows you to connect with the student a little bit, allows you to talk with them so that the student's comfortable with 
uh, visiting with you about things. Lots of times the counselor will host the student until camp, and then they, when they return from orientation camp, then they move in with their first host family. The counselor will also be doing some uh, visitation of the home. Um, if there additional, when there are additional host families, maybe doing some interviewing, qualifying, giving presentations, things of that nature. Nature. We ask that the local coordinator move the student from one host family to another. Going from one host family to another seems like a pretty easy thing, and you think, oh, that's easy. I'll just have the new host mom go pick her up at the host family's address. It's a very difficult thing for the student to go through uh, because it's a very sad moment leaving the first family and a happy moment going to the next. And so having the counselor go and pick them up from the first host family and uh, maybe take them to lunch, allow them to kind of get their motions straight, and then delivering them to the second host family works very well, and we uh, ask that you do that. Providing a weekly log of contacts with the student and with the host family. Uh, there is a form that will be provided to you, and you'll be providing that to me on a monthly basis, but it requires a weekly contact with both the uh, student and the host family. It's students' uh, responsibility to adapt to the situation. We don't want uh, host families and counselors and towns, communities adapting to the student. We want the student adapting to uh, their surroundings. Uh, we want them learning English. We want them learning uh, the American way of life. What are the duties of the club? This is a life-changing experience. Uh, for the student and can be a life-changing experience for the uh, club members themselves. So uh, the host club guarantees that they will provide two host families for the student. Um, again, we just want to remind clubs that ultimately the district has responsibility over these students, and uh, if for any reason uh, the club disagreed with the way the committee wanted to handle certain things, the committee would prevail. Uh, those families, of course, provided. Sometimes there's going to be transportation issues. Uh, we do take the kids on several trips during the year, and we ask that you help us out in getting the kids all together so that we can uh, take them on these district trips. Monetary obligation. $1,800 is the monetary um, obligation for a club. The, the rotor requires that you provide $100 to the student a month uh, as a stipend. And so the money goes to the districts to allow us to be able to do these district events that we've talk talked about. These are the host parents. They must be fully vetted. Uh, they have to have an application. We have to run CBCs. We have to do reference checks. Uh, we have to get pictures of the home both outside the home, in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the bathroom the student's going to be using. And it will be an orientation for the host parents. And we have to do all these things. Uh, there has to be a, a in-home interview done by the local coordinator with the host family before we can ever share information about the student with the uh, first uh, or any host family. The family is, of course, providing room and board. Basically, whatever you would provide monetarily for uh, your own kids, you would provide for your host student. That you love, support, encourage, understand discipline. Again, we want you to treat them like your own kids. These are not just um, guests in your home. We want them to be treated just like your own children. And uh, part of that is discipline. There are going to be times when the students are going to do something uh, to misbehave as to what host families are asking of them. And uh, host families and counselors need to be able to discipline the students as well. Clear communication is probably one of the biggest problems that we see. We see host families or counselors expecting the students to say certain things or to do certain things. And uh, a lot of times there are cultural difficulties uh, with students not understanding certain things. So clearly communicate all the things that you want uh, you're asking of the student. Uh, if in doubt, uh, ask the question. They'll be dealing with challenges. Of course, the first host family um, will be dealing with uh, 
probably more challenges than uh, many of the others because this is brand new to the student and uh, but it can be one of the most um, uh, in experiences for that first host family seeing them blossom right there in front of you I ask that all host families understand the sexual abuse guidelines and the crisis management plan so what are the duties of the student of course required to provide health insurance through CISI Bullduck we have to adapt to their new environment including their family learn language uh, and learn our culture uh, this is a cultural exchange, and so uh, we ask them to adapt to a new culture. Want them to perform well in school. We certainly don't require that they make straight A's, although most of these kids do. Uh, but we do want them to perform well in school. Filling school can be a violation of their visa, and uh, they can be sent home for not uh, filling classes. We communicate their wishes and desires, and not just. Uh, keep that within. We that they represent their country and Rotary and our communities. We want them to participate. We want them to make the most most of their exchange, and so participating in Rotary and school and community activities. The students are now required to keep track of their own visa, passport, and other valuables. It is uh, against new DOS regulations to require the students uh, provide their visa and uh, passport and such to the counselor or to the host family for safekeeping. Uh, so students are responsible for their own um, important items. Here's a better uh, description of the club investment of $1,800 provided with IPENs and the other uh, things you use that money for. So the cost to a host family, of course, supporting the day-to-day -day routine expenses, including room and board, laundry detergent, toothpaste, soap. Um, if their family is going on activities, going out to the movie, out to eat, if you'd be paying for that for your own kid, you'd be providing that for um, a youth exchange student. Extraordinary expenses, students are responsible for their own clothing and postage, uh, telephone. You need to, cell phones are a very uh, important thing. We really need the students to have a cell phone. Uh, how you're going to handle that is up to the club. Many clubs um, have a cell phone added on uh, one of their members' accounts, and they provide that to the student. Some clubs tell the students that they need to get their own cell phone. Uh, however the club wants to handle that is fine with us as a district, but a cell phone is a very necessary instrument that the kids have while they're here. Vacations uh, is something that you just need to sit down and talk with the students about. Um, the, you know, we've, we've taken ours on ski trips before and the student uh, paid for their own lift tickets but we provided meals and room and board and stuff like that. So just sit down make sure everybody understands how that's going to work before you leave on a family vacation. Some of the potential problems that a kid uh, can go through. Of course, sickness. Uh, kids usually develop homesickness within the first uh, four to eight weeks. <coughs> uh, internet problems. Internet course is very available these days. And in order for the student to really be able to plug in with their new environment, to learn the new culture, to learn the language, Language, they need to be within it. And if they're in uh, their bedroom with a door closed and a laptop talking back home in native language, then they're not learning what they need to learn. And we have seen exchanges fail because of this. So we uh, talk to host families and counselors about the internet problem. Uh, some people have the students. Uh, they allow them access to the Internet, obviously, uh, but they only do it in public places where they know that the host family can be listening <coughs> as to what's being said um, and making sure that the students aren't retracting back to their room and uh, not learning their new culture. There are difficulties that can be had. Uh, you know, there are many different cultures within uh, this big world of ours, and... Um, 
lots of people do things in different ways. So don't expect that these kids are going to come and they're going to uh, handle respect the same way. They're going to handle uh, meeting new people the same way. Uh, sit there and talk with your students about some of these cultural difficulties uh, that the students may go through. Language can be difficult. Uh, these kids come with great language skills, and some of them <laughs> can't speak in English at all when they get here. And uh, it'll take them a couple of months, but they will come around. Uh, host family, maybe they don't get along with the first host family. Uh, we've had situations where the first host family and the student just didn't click, and we moved to a second host family and a third host family, and they did just fine, and the exchange was successful. Uh, and that, that, that can happen sometimes. <coughs> School obviously can be mean and uh, uh, cause issues for some of these host kids. If you see the students and they're only hanging out with other host exchange or other youth exchange students at the school, uh, you know, that can be a red flag too. You want them to be able to meet friends uh, that have grown up in those towns and uh, to be able to um, learn that uh, culture that, that way. That can also be an issue. Um, other kids will gain weight while they're here. Uh, don't know what the scientific explanation for that is, other than they're excited when they get here. They want to learn new things. They want to um, try some of the cuisine that they've heard about. And so... Uh, gaining weight can be uh, an issue, especially for the girls. They don't understand that, and they don't want to gain weight, and uh, so we have to watch out for depression issues in that regard. Religion can be different. Even within Christianity, a lot of students come over, and they are Christian, uh, but Christianity in their home country is very different than it is here. And so uh, we ask that you sit down and you talk with the students. We want the students to go and to learn the culture. Religion is a part of the culture. But our job to convert these kids when they get here. Uh, we merely want to um, explain and to educate the kids uh, about uh, our culture within religion. Behavioral issues can always be an issue. Uh, <laughs> behavioral issues of host families and behavior issues of the kids themselves. Relationships. Uh, part of the good things about sibling relationships is that the kids oftentimes can set an example uh, for the students on how to act and how to react about certain things. Uh, older siblings can be protectors and listeners uh, for the student, be a sounding board, enter them to friends and activities. But the kind of a bad side, uh, and these things that I'm going to mention can be problems with the student, and they can be problems with your own kids. Uh, they can uh, exhibit jealousy with the family and from the other student, and even be angered to the point of harassment and abuse. Uh, relationships can go beyond the normal bounds of siblings uh, since they are not natural siblings. So it's something that you need to watch with sibling relationships. Um, in, you know, 99% of the time, sibling relationships have been great, but sometimes these kids don't get along, and uh, uh, it's all for them because we put a lot of pressure on the student and the uh, the kid themselves to, to, to get along. Some of the possible solutions uh, is, of course, that communication with the host family and the students, and uh, you know, if there is something that the host family is doing, uh, and that counselor even a uh, a committee member talked with the host family is helpful. Uh, communication, of course, is uh, extremely important. Don't ex expect the kid to know certain things. There are rules. Uh, you know, I have rules for my kids. I'm sure that you do too. And uh, those kids need to abide by those same rules. There may be uh, curfews that they abide by while they're here. Um, about money, about how they dress, things like that. And these rules may change from one host family to another, and that's okay as well. There needs to be a mutual respect, and there needs to be a respect from the student to the host family, and there needs to be a respect from the host family back to the student. Everybody to understand sexual abuse and sexual harassment. How does the district 
district handle a situation where a kid a student is misbehaving? Uh, what we do is we ask that uh, the, of course, the host family is going to be constantly reporting, as well as the students are going to be constantly reporting information back to the uh, counselor slash local coordinator. And if they see certain problems develop or being reported to them, uh, first off, we want the counselor to be able to talk to them. Uh, you have the counselor step in and talk about the situation and how it's going to be handled. If that doesn't work with the student, then uh, the committee steps in, and I, the youth exchange officer, will step in, and this is how I handle these situations. <clears throat> I want to be able to provide the kids with a second chance. And usually, uh, when I am asked to step into the situation, the very first thing I do is I issue a yellow card. Of course, a yellow card is a soccer reference and is basically a probation. Uh, and I explain the situation uh, that's being seen. And uh, I provided a document that explains why being put on probation, what they've got to do to get off probation. Uh, and it is a document that is signed by me, it's signed by the student, it's signed by the counselor, and it is sent back to their parents, and it is also sent back to their uh, youth exchange officer in their home country. Um, that has to handle uh, or tends to alleviate most problems. However, um, if it doesn't, then what we do is we issue a red card. And a red card is basically means that we're going to send them home. Uh, there are certain violations, obviously, that they can do, uh, like if they're caught with drugs or they're caught having sex, that is an instant red card and no probation. But for the most part, we want to be able to give the kids a second chance. Um, however, if that doesn't work, we want the counselors, we want the clubs, we want the families to understand that we're not going to leave them with a bad situation. That if uh, the kid is misbehaving in a way, we are willing to send them home. We do have a calendar of events. Uh, the calendar for this upcoming year has not been set yet, so you can ignore dates, but I'll show you some of the things that we normally do. In August will be our orientation. We will take the students to a Texas Tech football game. And we typically take our kids to Austin sometime in October. Uh, see the state capitol, University of Texas. Uh, we take them um, country western dancing at the Broken Spoke. And uh, uh, take them to the Bollock Museum, let them learn a little bit about, about Texas. Uh, we have our outbound interviews for kids in November. So if you know any students that might be uh, interested in going on a youth exchange, we have those in November prior to the year they're going to leave. We usually take them on a ski trip uh, in Rissa in January. Uh, the winter conference is in Tulsa most of the time, and we take all of our kids to it. Uh, and that's typically January, February, somewhere in there. Roundup in March in Sweetwater, we like to take the kids there. Uh, we usually take one or two students to the President Elect Training Seminar. Uh, we typically do not send all of our students. Uh, there, but we might take one or two to talk to the presidents about their opportunities within youth exchange. Dish conference, we take the kids to the district conference. Uh, this year it's in June. Uh, typically it's in uh, April, May, usually May. Uh, send the kids to Redla Rotary Youth Leadership Awards Camp, which is in New Mexico. And the kids have the opportunity to go on tours. There are two tour companies that Scry uh, will allow our students to go on, and uh, that information will be provided to them when we do orientation, and it's up to the students to get on the ball and uh, say a tour that they want to go on if they choose to go on. It is optional, uh, but it is not something that is the district's responsibility that they make sure that they get involved in a tour. Uh, that went up to the student. And they're leaving in June or July. All right. Let's see.